Hey Cougar fans, we're here with USF 8th year head men's basketball coach Chris Johnson. Um, we're going to discuss uh, upcoming games with Winona State on Friday at 8 p.m. and then approximately 6 o'clock on Saturday the Cougars play Upper Iowa. We urge all of you to come out and help pack the Stewart Center. Um, students will have the opportunity to get free t-shirts on Friday night against Winona State in, you know, in a whiteout type game. Um, so it's going to be an exciting weekend and games are really important for the Cougars. Uh, they're currently tied for Winona State uh, for third in the NSAC South and Upper Iowa is just a game back of third at three and five. Coach, talk about uh, this weekend and, and, and the importance of, uh, of it for your team. Well, I think you, you never want to talk about too much about uh, the big picture when you're, you know, playing weekend to weekend. You know, they're all important. Anytime you can play at home, it's important. Uh, but at the same token, you know, we're a third of the way, a little over a third of the way through the conference season already. And, you know, down the road, you're going to have to deal with some seeding issues. And so for like Winona, they beat us at their place. And you don't want to get swept by somebody because tiebreakers come in. That's the very first one, obviously. And the same thing with Upper Iowa. We were fortunate enough to win down at their place. If we can find a way to win here, then you can get the tiebreaker on them. Uh, that's more how I look at it than where are we at, you know, as far as records. Are we even or a game ahead or a game back? Because we haven't played the same opponents and, and everything works itself out. But the, the tiebreakers, uh, the, those have, you know, they've helped us in the past. And a couple years ago, we tied and thought we had a chance for a home playoff game and ended up being on the road because we lost those tiebreakers to a couple teams. So uh, it, it's, it's an important weekend. Uh, we, it feels like we haven't played at home in a while. Uh, more of that's because of the break than anything, but uh, it'll be nice to get back in front of the Stewart Center fans. It'll be just about a month when you really think about DWU being the last uh, game you've played at home. Um, but it's, it's an important weekend. Talk about uh, recent action. Uh, you went one-on-one -on, -one on the road. Mm -hmm. um, you had a good solid first half against a nationally ranked team. And then on Sunday, you went down to Wayne and, and picked up a win. Talk about that and what you thought of your team performance. Well, I thought uh, on Friday night against Augustine, I thought we were pretty, pretty good in the first half. Uh, followed our game plan really well. Uh, had that game being played at a pace that it needed to be played at for us to have a chance uh, to be successful. Uh, and then I thought in the second half, one, you got to give them credit. They're really, really good. Uh, they're not ranked number two by accident. <laughs> Um, and we made some mistakes we didn't make in the first half, and they made us pay for them. And I thought that kind of snowballed a little bit there late. Uh, but for the first 30 minutes of that game, I thought our guys played really well, and we competed. Uh, going into Sunday, I was a little bit worried. Like, how are we going to react to uh, a disappointment in a rivalry game, uh, you know, in front of a huge crowd, all that kind of stuff, knowing that we were going down to, to Wayne on a day that was not normal. You know, you and I talked before we got on camera about routines and that. Uh, we've never played at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We don't play on Sundays normally. We didn't have a shoot-around down there. We normally don't travel day of a game two hours uh, on the second night. And so there was just a lot of things. I was really happy with how we gutted one out. I didn't think we played great, but I thought we competed really hard. And uh, If we had made some shots, we might have made it a little easier on ourselves, but uh, I was really happy with the way we executed down the stretch. Uh, you know, on, on Saturday night, uh, Tom Acey, who is a reserve forward, but he plays a lot of big minutes for you, probably 16 to 20 a game. Um, he had five block shots against a pretty good team, against some pretty big, big kids inside, Dan Jansen and, and, and Casey Schilling. He had five. That's a career high for him. Interestingly for fans, that's 61 block or 61 blocks in 40-some games. He has nine games of three or more blocks, and this is for a guy that mostly uh, comes off the bench for you. He's got a couple career starts. But talk about Tom a little bit. Well, I, th I think none of that's surprising. Tom's always played probably his best games against Augustana, if you look back to last year. Uh, you know, we the, the beauty of, of a guy like Tom, if you're a coach, is I know exactly what I'm going to get every night I put him on the floor. You know, which is maximum effort, uh, unselfishness, and he's just going to play. And uh, so none of that is surprising. His, you know, I've said in the past, his offensive game is coming. But right now, defensively, we trust him. Uh, we know he knows our stuff. He's going to run it the right way. He's going to be a great teammate. He's going to care about getting other people open on the offensive end. 
And, and as, it, as his game keeps growing, his minutes will keep growing. But he's a great complement to Daniel. Those two guys really, they're, they're different players, but they play the same position. And so if we need a certain type of a big guy that night, you know, one may play more than the other. Obviously, Daniel scores it quite a bit better than, than, than Tom does right now. But Tom's coming. And right now, Tom's a little bit better defensive player, but Daniel's really improved in that area too. So really like that position moving forward for us. Yeah, fans, uh, Tom had, uh, to, along with those five bucks, he had eight rebounds against Augustana to, to Chris's point. Now, uh, talking about Daniel Hurd, he's a, he's a kid that came in this year and he's really adjusted well, 11 double figure games. So he, had, he, had, he, was, he led five players in double figure, figures against points against Wayne State was 16, and he was really a horse for you inside, wasn't he? Yeah, I think there was a, a point in the second half where I think we, we went inside to him on 12 straight possessions, and uh, he was a load uh, for us, and he can score in a variety of ways, which was what makes him tar hard to guard. He can step out, he shoots the three at a really high level, uh, he can bounce it at you, uh, and he can score with his back to the basket. Um, you know, I met with him yesterday, so he won't mind me saying this, we've got to find a little more consistency at times, and but I, I don't know if that, that's not a consistency of, oh, he's, he's poor one night, great one night. He's always been at least good for us, but he's had some big nights against, you know, some teams. And uh, he wants to get to the point where he can do that every night. Boy, I'd love to see that, you know. Hmm. And, uh, but he, he's a guy who's just come in. He's meshed well with our guys. He's a great, great young man. Uh, he, he's understanding more and more what we need out of him and how to play in our system. And uh, the future is really bright for that kid. And, and I'm excited that, you know, we, the two guys we've talked about are both going to come back and, and be with us, you know, in the future, not just this year. Well, you have a lot, a lot of kids coming back. And when Mac Johnson, who is the leading scorer at 16 points a game, got in foul trouble on Sunday, another Johnson stepped up, Kibu. Talk about Kibu's performance and how his development has come along. Well, he's developed about as much as any guy I've ever had in, in two and a half years. Uh, he got here, he was playing exclusively on the wing for us for a year and a half. And then last year we, we kind of dabbled with him at the point a little bit. And then this year that's all he's exclusively played, but it's a new position to him. So he keeps getting better and better. And so, and he's gonna continue to do that. When Kibu is aggressive, our team is a lot better. Uh, he creates more for others. He gets himself to the rim. I thought he was great on Sunday. I think he had 11 or 12 points. He had five or six assists. You know, he didn't, he turned the ball over, I think, only one time, made some free throws down the stretch. I just thought he was really good. Uh, and honestly, he was really good both nights. And uh, it's nice to have that stabilizing factor at, at your point guard position. And it's really nice to have a point guard who's about 6'4 and 215 pounds, you know, and, yeah. and, and can guard multiple positions. It allows us to do some things defensively that if we had a smaller point guard, we might not be able to do. Another player that's been uh, fairly consistent for you this year, he's come on, is, is your only senior, Jordan Stotts. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been taking the ball to the basket, hitting occasional threes. He's really uh, uh, gotten much stronger in terms of his moves and drives to the basket, hasn't he? Yeah, I, I think that uh, the, the offense that we're running this year uh, is going to lend itself to more of those situations. Uh, but he has definitely taken that and run with it. I thought in the past, He's been willing to settle for jump shots, maybe a little more than we would have liked. This year, I don't think that at all. He's, he's really been aggressive. And when Jordan's been really good, we've been really good. And that's not a coincidence. You know, when you're, you've are you got one senior, you lean on him a lot. And uh, I think Jordan's having a really nice year so far. Well, um, finally, let's uh, we'll wrap it up with, with this. Uh, what do you need to do well on uh, Friday and Saturday to, to to be successful this weekend? Well, Friday night, we're gonna to have to handle their physicality. I, I thought we allowed their physical uh, size and, and just their, their willingness to bang us around bothered us the first time when we played at Winona. It, it did, our guys know that, we know that. Uh, coming off a, a couple of physical games, I think we're ready for that, uh, but we didn't handle it well the first game. So that's gonna be really big. Uh, I think Winona's one of the best defensive teams in our league, and, and they don't make it easy on you, so you really have to be sharp offensively. And then Saturday night, uh, you know, we played really well offensively down there to start the game. Got a big lead, and then they pressed us, and we turned it all, all over the place. So we've got to take care of the basketball. If you take care of the ball, we'll get decent looks. Um, and we've got to, I'm sure they're going to make some adjustments to how we defended them the first time. Um, so 
we'll make our adjustments too. And uh, hopefully we just, need, we just need to execute. And that game will be about a little bit more about pace. Winona, it's going to be a slower pace game. They're not really wanting to just blow it up and down the floor. Upper Iowa would like to have that score be in the hundreds. So uh, two different games, two really good teams, but uh, hopefully we'll do what we need to do. Uh, fans, last time uh, the Cougars played, Mac Johnson had 39 against Upper Iowa in helping to win that game. He also had 28 against uh, um, Winona State, and so he'll play a key role. What the, uh, the team's playing better. Tell the fans why you really need them here this weekend. Well, I think any time that uh, you get a chance to play at home, you, you, you need to win your home games in this league if you want to get to where you want to be, uh, no matter what that goal might be. And then you got to try to split on the road. And we're coming off a road split, and they, these are two really important games. And our guys are playing really hard and at a, at a pretty good level here. And uh, I, I know it's always appreciated by them, you know, uh, that, that their efforts and their their willingness to, to, to play hard and do all the things to represent our school the right way are, are supported by the other students and the people in town. And that's always always more important than anything else. And then when they're once we get them in here, be loud. You know, be loud, be heard, have some fun. You know, I think we're a fun basketball team to watch and we'll continue to keep plugging and hopefully we can build on that. So we want you to bring the noise. Uh, folks, that's it uh, with Chris Johnson. Thanks for stopping by. Good luck to the Cougars this weekend. Thank you.